Hello everybody, this is Bob Anderson, and I'm going to do a video that discusses how I look to trade the five minute red line, which is um, what I call the side of the market. Um, there's two sides to the market on my charts. One is the overnight open. That's where price opened at 6 p.m. Eastern Standard Time the night before. And also where the 21 SMA on a five minute chart is sitting on your chart. So for example, if price is south of the overnight open and it's south of the five minute red line, then you know we're only looking for shorts um, in our trading strategies. Um, and then there's some caveats on in, in my opinion, in using the five minute red line, that'll help you <clears throat> increase your win percentage. If you just follow a few things that I'm going to discuss in trading the five minute red line. Um, so main thing is, is the 21 SMA off five minute data. I use a one minute chart. So I inlay a five minute um, SMA into a one minute chart and I trade off one minute candles. I'm going to show you some examples of all this in a minute. But anyways, and then one of the things that I like about this trade is it really has, you know, a good, uh, a good um, target to loss ratio. Um, you, you know, really, you know, you're normally looking at three, four, sometimes even five times your stop uh, for your targets, which is, which is a, you know, which kind of helps you with your, with your uh, profitability. <clears throat> even if you're a 50, 50 trader, as long as you're trading three to four to one, you're going to, you're going to win. So let's talk about how to do a little bit better than 50% on this trade strategy. Okay. One of the main things, to focus on in this trade strategy, in my opinion, is <clears throat> what the price action looks like going into the five minute red line and 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 and, and making sure that it that what you're seeing is lining up with what your overnight open is doing. So let's let's just give me let me give you some examples. Okay. So I'm going to use shorts in my examples. So let's just say we have the overnight open again, which is a 6 p.m. Eastern Standard Time opening price from the night before. So it's a line on your chart, okay? And if price, if price is way, you know, way down, way down here, okay, then you have a pretty down market, okay? Um, if price is like in here, I'm going to give some specific examples in, 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 uh, on the charts here in a few minutes. If price is somewhere around here, well, then it's not a convincingly down day. It's just, it's just down. Okay. And I, and I, I don't know that sounds kind of fuzzy what I'm saying, but you'll see what I mean in a minute. So anyways, um, so if you've got your, your five minute, uh, red line coming down, you know, trending down, let's just say, and price, and price comes to it from, you know, well, let's just say, uh, <laughs> it's easier if I use red if I'm going down. Price comes down, price comes down, Price comes down. Of course, price came down because it's pulling the five minute with it. Remember, the five minute is a 21 SMA off of the five minute data. So it moves rather slow. It's kind of like it's kind of like an elephant. Um, so anyways, and then price goes back to it. Let's just say price goes back to that box. Right here. OK, now, what is our entry normally? Well, our, our, I shouldn't say normally. What is our entry? Our entry strategy is as long as this bot, this candle closes relatively close to that moving average, and you know, so that the candle's not too big and you're not way away from price, 
away away from the moving average, then you take a short at the break of that candle. And then you then you hope that you get, you know, this. type of price action. And so you take a, you know, you take a sell stop and then you get dragged down and you have a target. And at the whole, the whole time your stop goes from here to here to break even, you know, and then gets managed to target hopefully. So this is the one I show right now because this is simple. Why is it simple? It's simple because you're south of the overnight open and you're south of the five minute red line. So if you're south and south and price is coming from, you know, a recent low or whatever, kind of rotating its book, you know, the best place, the best, the best sign to look for, honestly, if you want to know the best sign is that this is now your daily low. I mean, that's the best sign. I mean, if you want to talk about best, 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 best scenario, best, best, best scenario is you created a new daily low when you came up into this five minute red line. And then, and then the five minute red line just pushed it and continued it back beyond your, your daily low. That's, that's the best, that's the best scenario. Not necessarily going to happen if throughout the night it created crazy highs and crazy lows price just running around. You may not, you may not create a daily low, but anyways, <clears throat> that's the point. So this is the best scenario because you're south of this and you're south of this, okay? So you're trading with the trend. You're trading with the with the big big dogs, hopefully, okay? So, where does it get where does think where do things get dicey? Things get dicey right here. So let's go back to this scenario right here. Let's go back to this exact scenario right here. All right? And let's just say price comes up price comes through the five minute red line. Okay. And the five minute red line slanting down because of all this going on right here. Now you got, you got two problems. Problem number one, your five minute red line is slanting down. It's, it's telling you that the market's going down. You're south of the overnight open which is telling you the market is down also. So where some people get caught up is this thing makes a little hook, let's just say, and then, and then it pulls back. Let's, I'm gonna just use an example here. And then it pulls back and it pulls back and it sits on the top of the red line. People are like, oh, there's a trade right there, right here. I'm going to take that long. Well, there's a problem there. Okay. And, and, and I'm going to try to be specific with it. And I'm going to try to show some exact specific examples. Problem is when you broke the red line here in this example I gave right there. <laughs> I'm trying to show it. We had a shallow crossover is what I would like to call it, a shallow crossover. It's not a confirming push. It's not a confirming, you know, hey, we're going to change directions type move. It's more like, hey, we kind of broke through, cleaned out some stops of people that were short, maybe rolled the market over. And now we're gonna now we're gonna meander here. This is where failures happen so often in, in, in this strategy, is right here. Is this scenario right here? Because <clears throat> you didn't do confirmation that we're gonna go long. Now, let me kind of explain where things get a little dicey. Let's kind of explain where things get a little hard. Okay. Now, remember, we talked about this just a second ago. We're south right here, right? We're south of the overnight open, so we're kind of looking for over, we're kind of looking for uh, shorts. Remember, we're doing this, I prefer to do these trades, 
you know, after the market has gone through its, its, its insanity. So I prefer to do these trades after say 1030. Okay. So that means we're hoping the market has picked a direction for the day, unless you got some kind of news event happening at 1030 or whatever. So what you see is what you get is kind of what is the way I kind of like to take these trades. So what does that mean? Well, if you have a shallow, even though it had a gap here, if it's shallow, then it's not confirming that it's, 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 you know what I mean? Because you, you create a, a like a, a pivot here, but there's not much distance from here to that pivot. There's, there's not much, there's not many stops that have been cleaned out. There's not much confirmation that we want to go that way. What I prefer is this scenario where, where it does this, maybe even goes up, you know, and then comes back down, whatever, whatever, whatever. And then the SMA starts getting sideways because now it's kind of caught. Okay, it's kind of caught between being north and being south over the last 21 five minute periods. Okay, so then it comes down and it comes through the red line again in the direction of the overnight open in the direction that the market has been going. Okay. And it creates in this case, a shallow, a shallow crossover. Okay. I'm talking about shallow crossover. This is important. Shallow. Okay. Or it can be a big crossover. It doesn't matter. But in, in, when it, when everything's in agreement, it doesn't matter if the crossover is shallow. Okay. So, then you go like this and market starts coming back up and then it comes back up and boom, boom, boom. And then here's your entry. And I'm telling you this trade right here, this is, this is, this is the beast right here. And then wham. Now everything, now what's happened is everything is in alignment again. Okay. So you're in agreement with the five minute red line. You're in agreement with the overnight open. You crossed over, you crossed over to the south side of that 21 SMA showing that, that you know, you as the market want to go south. You pulled back up into that 21 SMA. And you said, come along with me, we're going south. And it, and that's what it does. A lot of times it's that crossover pullback. Sometimes the market is so excited about that crossover pullback <laughs> that they don't even pull back to the 21 SMA. There's a beautiful example on my chart right here with the RTY. Uh, what day was this? Um, January 31st. It was an absolutely beautiful crossover in, in conjunction with the direction of the market. All this fa fa failed stuff that I'm talking about, and then it pulls up and it just missed the the 21 SMA by 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 a tick, and then I mean it slammed straight down for over 10 points in like four minutes, just ching 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 ching, because they were waiting for that crossover. The, the market makers were waiting for that crossover confirmation, and then wham slam it again because they've got the people that are looking to think that this is long they've got them trapped you see what i'm saying they're looking for places to trap people and why is this a trap well this is a trap because this was a shallow shallow crossover pull back to the north side of the red line and then it and then it kind of took a took the people in and then it rolled over and failed and then it crossed over, ting, ting, gone. Okay. So this trade right here, this failure should not even be attempted. I'll show you examples. And then this crossover pullback, boom, that's, that's it. Those are the trades. And if you're, and if you're taking these trades and you're looking for, you know, say four to one, five to one, three to one, something in that, that respect, then, um, you know, you can, you can, 
you can fail on that shallow pullover if you want, or you can just avoid it. Um, and I'm going to show examples of the shallow pull crossovers. And then I'm going to show the problem with coding this thing too, by the way, just for everybody to understand is it's the shallow, it's the shallow, it's the shallow. Here's, here's the confusing part. Just so you, I want you to get this. It's the shallow pullover there. It's the shallow pullover right in here. That is, um, that I, that is recognized as having the gap because if it doesn't do that, the gap for the trades, if it doesn't do that, then when this one does this with the shallow pullback, you won't get that trade. I'm, if I'm making sense, okay? Because it, it has to, it has to, the, for, for this trade to work right here, for this trade to work with this, with the system I'm, I'm using, it, it's got to, it's got to be able to accept shallow, shallow, shallow gaps in pullbacks. Otherwise, it won't take those trades. So, anyways, I'm going to show some examples. We'll see how they look. It's um, it's the one trade that you know <laughs> I like to keep on all four of my charts. And then just look for those golden opportunities. And I'm going to show a few of them here in a minute. And then I'm going to show some bad ones also and why they're bad and whatnot. And then, and, and again, like all trades, not all trades work. Okay. So even if you lose a trade, that's a five minute red line trade. I mean, that's, that's what's supposed to happen. You're, you're not all trades work. Um, anyways, I'll talk to you guys in a second. Let me get the charts. All right. So <clears throat> what I want to show is some examples of some, hmm, some movements like I was talking about here. All right. So let's take, let's take the NQ, for example, this is January. No, this is February 5th. I picked this day on, uh, on purpose because I'm going to use an example from the RTY on February 5th. And I'm going to use an example from CL on fe February 5th. And I'm going to use this example here, February 5th. And you'll be able to see the difference in how each one's uh, 21 SMA five minute red line worked or didn't work. How about that? So. Here you got uh, NQ. This is your overnight open. We've talked about that before. So this is the so this price right here is the price by which the market opened at 6 p.m. the night before, and <clears throat> the market does its thing where it opens and runs around and does a beautiful. By the way, I'm working on this indicator right now, but does a beautiful second break. Keyword there: second break of the open range break and down it went. I mean, that's just massive, <laughs> massive, massive trade right there. Anyways, um, so, and then we have a new daily low. See how we're, this red, this red. So we had a small box going into the open, which is nice. That means we've got fresh area to move to. I like that. But anyway, so we had a new, let's see, the high was right here, the low was right there, and the overnight open is practically right in the middle. So there's really no, nothing you can trade to the left because there's just not any room to go anywhere. You're looking for things to move. Well, when it comes busting out of that box, by golly, oof, down it went. So anyways, um, we go up here to the over, we come up here from the daily low up to the red line and we don't pierce it. Now, if we'd have pierced it right here, then this would have been an entry going that way. And then when it would have come up, knocked this out at even. But instead, it finally came back, it came back to the red line. And is this is at, God, this is at 11.30. So it's right in my strike zone of time that I'm kind of really like looking for this thing because it's after 10.30, the market's now kind of meandering and kind of doing its thing. Well, here's, 
And here's where it gets interesting. So <clears throat> the, diff, the, di the distance by which we're sitting here to the overnight open is not very far. It's not a significant amount. It's actually, you know, relatively close. So um, one of the things that I was looking at as I actually took this trade right here. Um, I took it for more than this chart shows, but that I'll explain that in a second. So anyway, so, so we went up and the indicator was looking to take a short here. Okay. And it never got triggered because it, because it just kept right on going through, uh, the five minute red line. But <clears throat> here's what happened. We broke all these pivots to the left and we created we, we actually went through with a little bit of authority. I mean, from here to here. And then we set, came back down and sat on this five minute, five minute red line. And then bam, it went long and off it went all the way back to the open. Now, what was the main reason that I was looking for this thing, for this thing to be a potential long for me? The main thing that I was looking for this to be a potential long for me there's two things. Number one, and this is this this is just you know, and and you don't have to take these trades honestly. Okay, I mean it, it, you don't have to do this. So I'm not recommending it near as much as you know, like looking at it. But is number one was the distance from here to here for the NQ is really not that far. So <clears throat> the market's not forcing itself south. Number two, when it went through the red line right here, it went up and it broke all these pivots to the left. I mean, it went through with some authority. It went through to say, hey, we're here. We're going that way. And that's kind of the, that's kind of the sign. It's like, hey, we're here and we're going that way. When they break all these pivots to the left, because there are no other pivots. If you look at this, if you look at this chart right here, there are no other pivots until all the way up here. So we broke these two pivots to our left. That's why these dots are on this chart. These are your bluish dots. We broke them to the left. We came back, sat on top of the five minute red line, and then bam, we went all the way back. Now, <clears throat> is that... The most conservative trade? No, it's not necessarily because at the time you're taking it, your SMA is still kind of moving down. Your five minute SMA right here is still moving down. And then you get back to the overnight open. You all know what I've said about the overnight open. If you're at the overnight open and it's after say 12 or one o'clock, I mean, you might as well just forget it because that's where price is going to sit. Just for fun, here's what I'm talking about. Here's what happened today. Price came back to the overnight open and look where it sat all the way through closing. I mean, once price goes back to the overnight open, it has a tendency to just sit there. There's just like no trading. So anyways, so that is an example on January, I'm not January, February 5th, for example, where I'm trying to show that if you've got confirmation by blowing all your pivots to the left and you've got a thrust through the five minute red line, thrust, not a meander over. So what does a meander over look like? Well, I think there's one in the next day. Let me see here. I thought I saw another one the next day. Hold on here. <sighs> well, see, that could have been one right there. All right, so let's look at this. Actually, let's look at this. This is very similar to the day before, okay? This is very similar to the day before, except, except, Price gets from the daily low to the five minute red line a long ways away. So I, I'm not a big fan of that. I like I like I like price to get to the overnight open 
a little quicker, not through all this. But anyways, so and I sit now, now follow me here when I say a little quicker. A little quicker doesn't mean it comes down here and it runs way the heck up there either. See, it's kind of like it's kind of like timing. Things have to come together. The reason I say come from here and all the way back up to here because how many pivots did you break along the way, which then shows confirmation you're trying to go that way, not come back down. So it's it's kind of a timing thing. If you remember back on the one I just showed you, the one I just showed you, it was. This one was nice because see how it, it it's by the time it got back to this, it was still below the pivots here. You know, not that you have to pay attention to pivots too much on the five minute red line, but it is just nice to see that you're below the pivots. It just didn't pierce it and then it rolled up and then it did this thing. Anyway, so let's go to today again. Sorry, I can meander. I can talk all day on this stuff. But anyway, so let's go to this. So <clears throat> here we go. So we get up here to the five minute red line. It goes, we have, we have a, a con confirmed order. We came from a daily low, you know, blah, blah, blah. We didn't go way up by the time we got to the five minute red line. So it looked like a good trade. Came down, boom, went to break even, got back out. There we go. I mean, it didn't work. So, so what are we looking at? Well, we looked at price came back up and it broke all these pivots to the left again. That's interesting. See that? Not as much authority, not as much authority, but it actually did it again. It's meandering here, to be honest. If you go back and look at the other ones, it went through a lot harder, came back a lot sharper, and then turned. But anyways, these kind of meandered. It kind of meandered up and kind of meandered down. So what do you do here? Well, you take it again, boom, it ends up getting lost at a, uh, it ends up getting stopped out. So does that mean the world's come to an end? No, it doesn't mean the world come to an end at all because now, let me remove this. Now we can go back to the scenario I just talked about here. So why does the strategy allow for a shallow crossover pullback here? The reason it does that is because it's got to allow for a shallow crossover here and pull back to catch this trade. Okay, so what do I mean by that? Well, what direction are we from the overnight open? We are south. What direction then are we preferring to take these trades in? Well, south. What just happened right here? We had confirmed that longs are not going to work. This was not going to rotate back to the overnight open. At least it didn't show us the signs that it was going to like it did the day before. Okay? You don't know that necessarily and you can't, you know, you just got to kind of use some deductive reasoning, but when you have the failure counter trend, because it is counter trend in my world, going back long, back to the overnight open is counter trend. When you have a failure to the counter trend, this is when you're looking for that push through, pull back, boom, gone. And I mean, and look at that thing. I mean, yeah. I mean, it didn't even slow down until it blew through the low. Okay. So that is uh, an example of this scenario right here, where you had a shallow crossover, pullback, sat here, went up, failed, rolled back down, boom. Now, did I... Did I take this trade here? Yeah, I mean, I got, I did it the day before. <laughs> so, you know, I saw that the overnight open wasn't that far away. It was almost exactly the same time of day, okay? So, but what you cannot do is allow yourself 
to give up on the fact that, okay, if it didn't work, what am I supposed to see now? Well, I'm supposed to see this, this, and this. And that's exactly what we saw. Okay, just like I said here, if you don't have, and, and these shallow crossovers, if they don't have authority, this right here, this part right here shouldn't even happen. You shouldn't even try it because you got to understand it's again, the, the 21 SMA is going south. Price is pulling south. You're south of the overnight open. If, if this thing doesn't have authority going up and back, then you probably really shouldn't even try this trade. But it, you know, make sure you put it on a tight leash. I mean, you know, I took, Ten dollars, two ticks. I mean, you know, it was a ten dollar loss because I squeezed it, and then boom, it got stopped out, and then, and then this came down, this came up, and then bam. So, I'm going to show you the same February fifth in oil here. Just a second, let me let me get that. Okay, this is oil. Let's talk about oil now. Remember, oil market opens earlier than. Uh, than the uh, than the equity markets, so oil opens up at nine. Now let's talk about the situation again. What is the situation? Well, the situation is this: we are south of the overnight open again. So the overnight open is sitting up here at seventy two seventy five. Okay, so. <clears throat> Price happens to roll down inside the five minute red line. Remember we talked about that right here? The shallow crossover pullback. Remember we talked about that right here? In agreement, in agreement with the overnight open. Okay, so we had a shallow crossover pullback, boom, there you go. There's trade number one. That's not the one I want, that's not the one I'm trying to show you. What I'm trying to show you is the one that goes along with the same time frame, roughly, as what happened with the NQ. So, once again, we had that same pattern that I don't like. Okay, I don't really like this pattern, but it's this meandering stuff all the way over here at 11 o'clock. So, what happens? Well, what happens is that... 21 SMA finally catches up to price. Okay. This price has been hanging out here waiting for it. And then when, when candles go up, they come down, break, and trades a loss. It's a loss. It's a loss. But did we lose hope? No, we didn't lose hope. Here's why we didn't lose hope. Now, this is this, this right here shows you exactly in a much clearer format in in oil will and gold will by the way oil and gold will definitely show you clear formations and of of the things i'm talking about than nq because nq is you know uh, <laughs> nq can get kind of scary but that the one i'm talking about is is the one where up we're up here I talked about it crossing over with authority, with authority, turning the head of the 21 SMA and coming back and hitting it and not being far from the overnight open. Okay, so that, all right, we've cleared out a bunch of pivots to our left and we're not far from the overnight open, so we're not in a major downtrend market. So what happened? Well, we created this new, this huge gap here. Look at all these pivots to our left. Because remember, we had these pivots, all this meandering, all this, all this right here. This is exactly what we're looking for. See all, oh shoot, oh, sorry. Hold on here. I'm sorry about that, folks. Give me a second. This is kind of important. All this right here, all that garbage garbage just pure garbage consolidation garbage we blew out of that consolidation garbage here okay showing that we don't want to be in this consolidation garbage no more all right 
And then we came right back, sat on top of that five minute red line again. And we went all the way back to that overnight open. And that is the 21 SMA right there in a nutshell. When it does this, not a shallow crossover, not where it just kind of lays over there, but it came and blew out out of this whole consolidation box, came back down, sat on there, and then bam. Yeah. All right. So <clears throat> that's what I'm talking about, where you clear out all the stops to your left and you 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 know when you're counter trend when you're counter trend when you're not counter trending like this you don't need to do all that you can be as you can just i mean you matter of fact when this thing blows through you are praying that it comes back and hits that hits the, hits the bottom of that red line you are praying for it to do that okay because this is what they're going to do when they do it so over here creates this consolidation garbage that nobody likes. That's money stealing, all the money stealing going on in there. Okay. Blow out of there with authority. I mean, that's authority. That's authority. And if it had run all the way to the overnight open from here, okay, well, you just didn't get you just didn't get the trade. But when they when when Santa Claus came flying by with his reindeer. And he handed you this rope to catch on and go to catch a ride on his sleigh for you to just grab it and go along with him. When he handed you that Christmas present, why didn't you take it? It was all right there. And so you just got to see opportunities when the opportunities present themselves. Just because price went and touched that damn red line does not mean it was a great opportunity. But when price is coming from a whole new area, coming back into that red line and then going, that's what you want to see. That's that's exactly what I want to see. I'm going to find, let me, give, me, give me a second. I'm going to... Um, by the way, this one profited out for the day. <laughs> yeah, that one profited it out for the day. Anyway, so that means it stopped taking trades. I don't even know if any more set up. Uh, nope. Nope. And then we see. And then what do I talk about? When we go back to that overnight open, then we sit on that overnight open and it's done. It's over. You know, the party's over. No more, no more trading. No more stupidness. See, look at that. It just sits on that overnight open. Now, I don't make this. There it is. Just sitting there. Just sitting there. Because they, they have, the market makers have no direction to send it anymore. They've already brought it back to equilibrium. They're done. All right. Let me go find the RTY example. And oh, let me, let me see. Let me see if I, oil, the equities don't move the same as oil. But let me, let me just kind of glance over here. And see what happened the day before. Oh, here's me working on. Here's me working on the. Uh, <laughs> here's me working on the open range break. I got all these lines on here. Don't worry about that. All right. So, oh yeah. Oh yeah. Okay. So here's oil again. All right. So we created a new daily high. We blew through. By the way, bounced off this five minute red line several times here. But here we created a new daily high. Came right back to it. And then bam, there's your long. Wham. There it is. This was at uh this was at 10, 10 20 or 10, 10 05. The entry was at 10 06. And boom, there it goes. Uh up, it crossed over. Oh wait, we're 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 north of the overnight open. Yep, we're north of the overnight open. So we're looking for longs. Unfortunately, this this was this didn't create an actual pattern, didn't create an actual gap before it did that, or that would have been nice because it would have been a crossover in agreement with the overnight open back towards the high of the day, off of you know. It, so what what we would have been looking for, right? 
We're looking for a shallow crossover. And we talked about that. We're looking for a shallow crossover. So we would have wanted it to go like maybe, to, I mean, at, at least a shallow crossover. It doesn't have to be shallow to there, you know, and then come back and sit on here. But what happened is it never showed that, even though it then blew right on up. It was beautiful. It would have been a beautiful trade if it would have just at least, at least given me some space over here to the left that I can see that they ran it through, then they cleaned out the stops that jumped on, and then they reverse it right back up. Uh, anyways, so that's the day after. So I'm going to pull up the RTY now, and we'll go over that. All right, just a second. Okay, so last chart I want to show is, uh, is actually GC. I said, I kept saying RTY. <laughs> I mean GC, gold. All right. Um, and uh, what I want to show is just the same kind of scenario as we were kind of talking about a minute ago with this hodgepodge I got going on behind me here. So anyway, so like in the case of gold, let's just talk about this. Wow. OK. Um, <laughs> looks like gold fell off of a cliff here. Uh, must have been news that day. No, 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 I'm looking. There must have been news because this fell right off a cliff at 830. So probably employment news. Anyway, so down gold goes. Very, uh, very strong move down, by the way. So we're south of the overnight open. So we should be kind of looking for shorts, you know, if we can. Otherwise, we got to look for, you know, gaps, north confirmation type stuff, breaking pivots to the left, yada, yada, yada. So what do we get? Well, we got this right down here where we created new daily lows. And this went down so fast and from the overnight open. So it wasn't like starting from already down several points or anything it was down it started at the overnight open so you know 10 o'clock so 8 30 to 10 10 is when the five minute red line caught up to the um to the price but the price hadn't created a new low since since 904 so it was about an hour that it sat here going pretty much sideways Came up here, hit, and uh, rolled over. I mean, it 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 would have been um, it would have been a winning trade, um, but my my rules my rules are not to take this trade purely because the length of this candle is so big by entry that. Uh, um, I don't have I don't have anything as support for my stop. So this one rolled up, hit, came down, and rolled down. So I mean it actually did pretty good. But when this rolled back up into the five minute red line again, should have been some kind of some red flags here because we didn't create any new lows and we started stair stepping back up. See how this one, this one pivoted up from from a higher spot than this one. So when we got here, it's not a surprise that it blew right through it. But not only did it blow right through it, but it blew through it with authority. So this is what I'm talking about of having action with authority. Okay, because one of the things that you're looking for, and I'm going to get to that part right here in a second. So. So look at this. So we blew up with authority. So we cleaned out all those stops, all those pressure spots from that point down. Okay. That's what, that's what they did. They cleaned out all those stop losses and stuff from that point down. So what does that mean? Well, that means, see all these pivots to the left, we broke them all, whatnot, and we started rotating back to the five minute red line. Well, <clears throat> to be honest with you, 
with all that space, the one thing that I knew, or I felt I knew, I should say, one of the things I anticipated was us, if this spot was, if this line is going to act valid at all, then price should go from here back up and almost test the pivot or at least get me close to that pivot. Okay. Now, am I, am I making sense? If this is going to be a, if this is going to be a potential point of, of, of support for a long in my mind, I'm going, okay, this is, this is a good thing because if this is support, it will not, it should not encounter resistance again until we get in this area here. And as long as we can get to that area there, I have room to either take profit or, you know, have my stop at break even. So it could be like a no loss trade. Those pivots, those pivots to your left that clear the path for the direction of the trade you're taking really do exactly what I just said. They have a tendency to clear the path for the trade that you're going to take as long as the spot that you're taking it from is going to be support okay so when they when this price was coming back basically the new longs the one that blew this through they're looking for a place of support to enter in some more contracts they've cleaned out all the stops here and so this is what they did so we got moving, 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 moving. And where is the even? There it is. All right. Bam. Where did I take my profit? Where did I take my profit? Right at that pivot. I didn't do that by accident. And I knew, I knew I had space from here to here. I knew that. And I didn't know from when we got there what was going to happen. But I do, I, but I knew that that was going to be, if any, if, if there was going to be resistance initially in my thoughts, this is in my thoughts, okay? In my thoughts, if there's going to be resistance, it's going to be there. It's just like, I'll give you another example. It's just like this right here. When this came down, this over here was going to be resistance. Here's the interesting thing about this. Okay, I'm going to show you something very interesting. Okay, what is a sign? <laughs> this is a loaded question, so I'm just going to give you the answer. But what is a sign that the market is going to reverse? What is a sign? I'll show you it. It's right here. Okay, I mean, none of this is 100%, but this blowing up to here, this these are these are just what's going on behind the scenes type stuff this going from here to here but it didn't break this low see that it didn't break this low that's why when this went like this and this and it created another high this is a higher low than this one when they created this other higher low, see this price action right there? Wow. <laughs> that right there was a sign that the buyers are stepping back into the game. You didn't break the low. The market didn't have the energy to take this pivot pullback to new lows. So when this came up and hit here, we should not have been surprised. Okay. Now this is, this is, I'm getting a little technical here, but we should not have been surprised that even if this push down happened, that this did not go to the lows because this in this didn't go to the lows either. They didn't, they didn't clear the path. As a matter of fact, they showed signs that the path is going the other way. This right here, this thrust up, this cleared the path. It showed us the direction, at least to that point. And I don't actually remember what happened after. 
What did we do? Probably kept going. Oh, no, no. Oh, okay. It actually, all right. So actually it did roll over. I actually didn't remember. I swear to God. So I'm looking at it live here like you guys. Um, I don't remember. I think it comes back to the red line, doesn't it? Let's see. It's coming back to the red line from a higher, from a higher pivot. Okay. So this is, this is a crossover. This is touch one. So we hit this one. Let's see what happens here. Here you got, here you got your diamond. So you're looking for another long on touch two. Okay. And you cleared a path again. You cleared a path right here. Um, that was higher than here. So let's, let's just see what happens. I don't know if it took it or not. Nope. Okay. So then, then this whole candle, ha, oh, shoot. I remember this now. <laughs> Damn it. See, this is, this is where stuff gets kind of frustrating. So see this candle right here, this candle right here, the whole thing, all of it, open, closed, whatnot, south of that five minute red line. Now, now, now let me explain something to, to you. Okay. These are one minute candles, but this is a five minute moving average. Okay. So what does that mean? Well, that means the five minute candle, the actual five minute candle, it's still, it's getting kind of technical, but it's still north of this line. It just happened to be one minute of that five minute candle is below that line. Doesn't mean jack necessarily to a five minute candle trader. Okay. So the mere fact that it shot back up and through is not really a surprise, but hey, well, wait a second. It didn't actually work so far. Let's see. I, I actually don't remember. I really don't. Now, okay, so now let's talk here. Now we're below. Okay, this is, mm, I like this. We are below the 21 SMA, right? Okay. We are also below the overnight open okay we 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 confirmed that earlier all right <clears throat> so below the overnight open below the five minute red line you should be looking for the pullback breakdown why is bob anderson not going to look for the pullback breakdown Why am I not going to look for the pullback breakdown? And it may actually do a pullback breakdown at work. I don't know. Here's why I'm not going to look for a pullback breakdown. Because this is trending up this line. And so I don't want to, I don't want to have to try to get into a trade that's going to force the moving averages to go back down. It's just my, just my preference. So just because I'm south of the overnight open and I'm now south of the five minute red line, I'm not going to look for this trade to go south because we are trending up. The market is exhausted on going down at least in my opinion, from what I'm looking at right here, I'm actually going to look at the rest of it with you guys. What does it do? Oh, okay. All right. All right. So, so we shot back up. Now this is where if it was trending down the 21 SMA, I'd be looking for a short, but we're trending up. So I'm, 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 I'm not, I'm not going to do that. I'm not going to do that. Okay. Okay. So we, we went up through it. Okay. That, that's what I would have expected us to do anyways, is to go back up through it because of what I said. Look at, look at the slope on this, on this 21 SMA. It's now sloping up. Okay. Sloping up pretty, pretty significantly, just like over here, it was sloping down. I mean, that thing almost made a V uh, <laughs> because price action was so strong in gold. Oh yeah. Yeah. Look at it. All right, so let's just see. I'm going to keep going. I don't, I don't remember this. Okay, so do we have a long here? Do we have a long here? 
per my rules, we don't. <laughs> but it worked. Now we do. See this little thing over here? I can see that we do here. Now, all right, so are we looking to take this? Again, me, me, eh, I mean, it's 1250. What is this? This is gold. Yeah, I'm not looking to take it. I'm looking to be done. I would, I'm would. i looking to have this one be my money and that it. Let's see what happens. Ah, and see it went down below the five minute again, killing the trade. What's it doing now? What's it doing now? Now it's literally doing nothing. Now gold is doing what it does very often in the afternoons. Nothing. Okay, so none of that's surprising to me. There's nothing there. Now, if I'd have had my one minute gold lines and my five minute gold line lines on, there may have been some trades in there that I could have seen, you know, that I don't see that I don't see when I have them off. But that's just the five minute red line. The five minute red line is not supposed to be a highly traded line. It's supposed to be, it's supposed to be a trade that, <clears throat> you know, that is um, relatively infrequent, you know, two a day, maybe in an instrument. Um, you know, I think, I think, let's see here. This, this is, this is what day is this? I don't know what day this is, but on this day for the whole trading session, I think, I think it, it only took two trades for the whole day. So I said about two. And even this one, I wouldn't have been taking it. The system took it because, well, I guess, I guess maybe now that I look at it, because it did clear a new high and then do this. Yeah, that's not a bad trade. It's not a bad trade. Actually, that's not a bad trade. See, we cleared a new area, made our way back to the five minute red line. Five minute red line. I mean, we had a we had a big push up right here. Came back down, just ran out of gas. I mean, it's two o'clock in the afternoon. I mean, gold is uh gold opens early and gold closes early. <laughs> so, anyways, so you could have you could have gotten a little bit of money out of that if you were in it, but I wouldn't have been trading it. Anyways, those are some examples of how I trade the five minute red line. I like to look at the slope of that five minute red line. I, li I like to look at my relationship to the overnight open. And I like to look at, you know, if I'm going to be quote unquote counter trend, the overnight open, did I clear space? Did I clear an area? Did I break some pivots to my left? Did I get lucky and Santa came back and dropped a rope down to me so I could grab onto the sleigh and ride with him? For, the, for, for this right here, for this exact pattern right there. So I grab Santa's sleigh and he takes me from here to a ride to wherever I want to go. Hopefully not the North Pole, it's too cold. But anyway, so that is kind of what you're looking for. Or the shallow crossover when you have the failed break up and then you shallow crossover then you come back in and then bam so so your pivot pullback on your shallow crossover does not need to clear out all these pivots over here because it's just confirmation that the longs lost the battle so the shorts are taken back over again with the five minute red line trending that way and price, um, and then and then you can get that shallow crossover, pull back, and then bam. Anyways, I know I made this video long. I'm sorry, but I, but I get a lot of questions on these trades. Um, I like them. You got to be patient because you got to sit around and wait for them. But uh, they uh, when you when you hit the right ones, boy, they move. They can really move, and they can make you a lot of money. Uh, I expect as the market gets as the market gets uh, further along this year, 
these targets will definitely expand on the five minute red line because they'll, the, the targets will just be easier to be bigger because there'll be more players. There'll be more people pushing it. I mean, it's nothing for the five minute red line to be four to one, five to one on their targets. Seriously, it's nothing for that. So that makes it a good, a good trade to, to, to learn. Talk to you later. Bye.